So I literally just concluded a cruise with Europe's most popular cruise line. And it made me realize that unfortunately, this is not the cruise line for me at this point in time. To fist fights taking place at parties over underage minors, to teenagers being at the nightclubs during the late hours, blatant racism, and even operational issues that I believe was so small and minute at times, they shouldn't have even been a problem to begin with. Of course, I will be going into full detail when it comes to these issues and more as this experience was definitely different than my first as I have sailed on this cruise ship twice within the past 60 days. Let's just say that this cruise line and this ship in particular is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. The vessel that I would be conducting a 7 day western caribbean sailing on would be the world's newest cruise ship the MSC Seascape. The ship was built in 2022, cost 1 billion dollars to build, holds just under 4500 passengers, has 19 decks and also has the first robo coaster at sea known as Robotron. However, for this particular sailing, Robotron will be down. I will go over some details later on in the video because I do think that is indeed a big deal. Unlike my original or first cruise on board the MSC Seascape, back in December of 2022 during its maiden voyage, I would not be sailing alone for this particular cruise. This time I will be sailing with my girlfriend Lauren, her dad, and his girlfriend, all of which are French, they speak fluent French obviously and I do believe this gave a completely different perspective than what I had experienced the first time around because unfortunately I don't speak French at least not yet I'm learning guys give me a break Dizuli, that's sorry in French now this little nugget of information is important to know because MSC just like every other cruise line is an international line however they do primarily have European audiences guest passengers on board their ship usually when you get on board an MSC ship whether it's sailing out of the United States or it's sailing out of somewhere in Europe you'll see Italian you'll see French people you'll see Spanish and then kind of sprinkled in there you'll see some people that I met from the Netherlands in the UK and over in the United States you'll also see guests that are on board from Central and South America as well from places like Brazil for for example. Simply put, overall, Americans are more than likely going to be the minority on every single MSC ship. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing by any means. Oh no, there are pros to this for sure. You are going to be immersed and engulfed in so many different cultures and languages, and there's always something to learn that's absolutely beautiful. However, when you have the pros, there will always, unfortunately, be cons, which I'll explain later in the video. For my room or cabin for this seven day cruise, I will be staying in what's known as an accessible interior located on deck five. Specifically, I will be in room 5023. And the price for my room, which would include Wi-Fi and drinks, would be just shy of $1,700, which I think many will argue for a seven day cruise is not a bad deal. This room, by the way, was also paid for by my sponsor, Touring Plans. Make sure you check them out. Link in the description box below if you want the vacation of a life. Time. So now that we've got the basics out of the way and the little giblets, we have officially reached the point of no return. We are about to dive deep into some stuff that may not be favorable. So all you MSC lovers out there, I'm telling you right now, if there's something you don't like, just know that I don't really care. You're going to have to suck it up on this one. I am simply giving my opinion, well, not only mine, the opinions of my girlfriend, other passengers, and well, even some crew members. As my girlfriend did interview a lot of people in French on board, getting their perspective. Perspective. I would also like to add that moving forward, I will not be sailing with MSC again, with the exception of three reasons, those of which I will be talking about at the end of the video because, well, that's boring. This isn't about me. So let's dive into this. On embarkation day, aka the first day of the cruise, things were overall pretty smooth, at least once I got to the terminal, because prior to that, unfortunately, there was some gigantic marathon which ended up closing down the tunnel that leads to the large cruise port in the entire world port Miami the problem with this is that a lot of people passengers that were sailing on board all the cruise ships that were docked there that day didn't really look into a marathon potentially taking place and it caused major delays the problem that I had in particular is that I drive an electric car I have a Tesla and you see I was almost already out of electricity somewhat when I got over that way and all of the places where I was going to charge prior to getting to the port were blocked off due to the marathon and I had to drive an hour the opposite direction just to charge just to come back it was a pain but when I got over to park in the parking garage it was 150 
$54 for the entire cruise. And inside the terminal, there wasn't a lot of people there as the boarding process was pretty snappy, quick, and efficient. Once I got on board the MSC Seascape, which is a very, very beautiful ship, by the way, there is no debating that in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion, you do have to activate your sailing card, the card you use to open your door and pay for drinks, stuff of that nature. The activation system, it causes a giant line at the beginning of the cruise and well, I do believe it is somewhat outdated. You have to manually put your card on file and it's just something that I know a lot of people don't like. Another thing would be getting to your room because of the style of the elevator. You have to push which room you are going to prior to entering the elevator. It's something that I have kind of grown to somewhat like. I know many don't, but it would be in this case kind of to each your zone. The only problem with the elevator that I think everybody would have a problem with is that at times you would go to press a button and it would tell you that it is not available essentially letting you know the elevator was not working and you got to take the stairs to wherever it is that you have to go I do believe they use the entirety of the ship which I would consider real estate because it all should be used in terms to make money and just kind of give people that wow factor so that they can have fun and in return spend money and give it over to the cruise line one problem that I did have was that their premier attraction the Robotron was down now I was able to go on board this exclusive amazing ride which is ten dollars per ride during the maiden voyage of the first cruise on board the MSCC scape however I did talk to some friends of mine that our crew on board they instructed me that the ride had been down for a total of three weeks now mind you this ship has been in operation for about two months or eight weeks so you're saying on a brand new cruise ship the premier ride that they use to attract kids and families have been down and what bothered me about this and why I think it's a big deal is that like I said it's a big selling point for MSC when it comes to the seascape and throughout the entirety of the cruise there was nobody there from the tech team or anybody of that nature looking out to try to repair this attraction they just kind of said hey it ain't working deal with it my room was extremely spacious and functional like i said i had an accessible cabin which means it is typically allotted to people that may be in a wheelchair has some type of medical issue or they're in a walker something of that nature however just keep in mind i didn't steal this room for anybody it was just given to me and I didn't leave Grandma Agatha at the port because she couldn't get the room that she needed. It doesn't work like that. But I will say overall, when it came to the room, I'm not a huge fan of interiors. I don't mind it because I am not picky, and I know a lot of you like the review, and some of you prefer an interior cabin, so you can spend that additional money that you didn't spend on a suite or balcony elsewhere on the ship or over in the ports of call. The only problem that I have personally with interior cabins is that you don't know what time of day it is by that. Like, you can't get actual sunlight into the room so it can for a lot of people I know it does for me throw off your sleeping cycle the environment overall was pretty chill and experienced. Like I said, when it comes to MSC, you will find a lot of people from all walks of life, primarily from Europe, people like French and Spanish and Central and South American. However, these people have exclusively cruised MSC. I do believe it does create a pretty unique environment for the minority of the group, the Americans, but unfortunately, it does also create some problems. And by that, I mean racism. I am going to be very brief here, but explain as much as possible to get my point across most of you know that here on this channel I never ever say somebody is racist we had one situation with my girlfriend and she made it very very clear and she bought race into the mix other than that I am not somebody that is claiming to be a victim of any kind I just call it like I see it as somebody that's been to 78 countries I've seen a lot and I know that the world is not as black and white as we would like to believe and some people are have their opinions and they are entitled to it when I got on board I was I kid you not, one of three black Americans on board. I'm, I'm never in my room and I see everybody. I get a full lay of the land when I'm on cruise ships and I do this intentionally to get a feel for the demographic and the overall environment and vibe on board. One thing I noticed particularly with the Italians and the Brazilians on board, they looked at me like I was less than nothing. Whenever I would go sit down somewhere, be it the theater or someplace of that nature, a bar, a lot of them would literally immediately move over someplace else while at the same time giving me disgusting looks. I would hear comments here and there. Needless to say, it just wasn't as welcoming as I had hoped, and it wasn't something I was paying attention to on my last cruise on board the MSC Seascape, simply for the fact that I was looking at the overall design and just the aesthetics of the ship. Now, what really kind of pushed things over the edge was when my girlfriend Lauren and I were at the nightclub. Of course, we were getting the typical looks. There was a girl from Brazil, and she had followed my channel, and she was 
very nice. She said that she had watched the video that I made prior on the MSC Seascape, and she looks at my videos for advice and tips on cruising, stuff of that nature. She was known as an au pair, which is a group of nannies. My girlfriend, Lauren, did it, and basically you're talking about, in this particular case, a bunch of Brazilian nannies that are here in the United States that have a different mindset and culture and just overall way they think that I do, which is totally fine. But the problem was they were looking at me and Lauren and her and I are very, very social people, but they waited. My girlfriend Lauren goes into the bathroom and it was kind of weird. They all kind of just like piled in and followed her like maybe a second or two after she left. They told her that she needs to marry me and then leave me essentially taking my money. When the girl comes out, I was kind of floored because she told me that I don't deserve her and that I should treat her better. Keep in mind, this is the first day of the cruise. They don't know me. They don't know anything, which was absolutely insane to me. When I talked to the subscriber the next day, the one Brazilian that was with the group, she told me that typically people like me, they usually have money from time to time, but we are no good men. Basically saying that me as a black man, I'm not any use to any of the girls that they are around or any of the women that they see. They went into more detail, cracking jokes. They were all laughing, which led me to believe that they truly believed everything that they were saying. Because I always say when a lot of people are laughing about a joke, I know I wasn't, but there is typically a little bit of truth or a belief system behind said joke. But needless to say, it was just kind of a, a, a terrible experience for me. But overall, I'm somebody that brushes it all off and I'll keep on trucking, especially when I don't believe anybody has any merit to their argument, meaning they do not know me or or my girlfriend Lauren whatsoever. To conclude on this little segment, because I do think some of this is irrelevant, however it's needed if I'm going to bring up allegations and points such as this, personally I don't care what other people think, I deal with a lot of hate regularly, be it online and even in person, I've been dealing with it since I was a child, since I was bow-legged walking around like a, like a black forest gump, it is what it is. But when it comes to what happened on board the MSC Seascape, this is not a representation of everybody from a certain country. I have been to Italy many a time. I have friends over there as well. I want to go to Brazil someday. And I also have friends that are from Brazil, just haven't been to the place. Very, very cool, amazing people. So it is what it is. Just understand that there are just idiots out there. Anyway, another thing that I want to bring up about the overall environment on board MSC ships in general is that they can tend to be somewhat confusing and seem somewhat cheap. What I mean by that is MSC is number one in Europe and they are little by little kind of coming into the mainstream of the American market trying to appeal to the customers over in the United States to get some of that moolah, that guap, that bread, that cheddar, which does make sense. However, it's like with some of their operations, they are trying to cater to the U.S. passengers while also catering to what the passengers that are accustomed to over in Europe are when it comes to the MSC brand. You'll see a lot of upselling on board. It will start off as early as first thing in the morning. People will be at the buffet just trying to grab a bite to eat and you will constantly see people from the specialty dining restaurants coming up and trying to sell you a dinner. And it does get a little annoying after a while. I understand the cruise line is just trying to make more Money. A lot of people will understand that as well. However, when I tell you that it is happening regularly and often, you can't simply enjoy your meal. It's like somebody is coming up every couple minutes. It does get a little bothersome. And in my opinion, it does make the cruise line seem cheap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you don't like the word cheap. I forgot we were at Disney World here. Not really. A lot of people don't like the word cheap. We'll say uh, cost effective. And let's face it. If we're going to be honest here, when you look and compare MSC's prices, they are extremely competitive. You can find some pretty good deals on some two-day cruises, three-day cruises, 14-day cruises. So for a lot of people, they choose MSC for the convenience and the price and maybe not so much for what they offer or the fact that once you get on board, you are going to be kind of upsell to regularly. And I do believe that comes down to personal preference and opinion. Getting into the food, which obviously is a huge deal and staple for the cruise ship industry, I have said on multiple occasions that MSC's food is not that great. And I don't mean it tastes bad, it's just kind of bland. However, MSC has definitely been stepping it up, even in the buffet. But the problem when it comes to MSC is that they are still trying to find their footing and seasoning the food and offering quality service. One thing I noticed, and this is the difference between American Cruise Lines and let's say MSC, 
The Europeans are not used to being upsailed to. So when you go and look at the specialty dining restaurants, by the way, I did have Tapinaki. I went to the Mexican restaurant on board. I went to the seafood restaurant on board. I ate the main dining room and I ate at the buffet on board. And when it comes to specialty dining, I did pay for myself, my girlfriend Lauren, her dad. And when you're talking about spending three to four hundred dollars every time you eat, you would expect some expedited and amazing service. And a lot of people felt that they didn't get it. In particular, we were at Ocean K, their seafood restaurant and well there was almost nobody there however there was some passengers and guests in the back they waited and waited and waited for their appetizers to get there they never came so they ended up leaving and for us we ended up waiting I want to say about 45 minutes to an hour before our appetizers came as well and I'm not faulting it to the crew I'm not faulting it at the cooks it's just the whole engine in itself everything has to be done better when people are spending money just to sum it up the food has gotten better personally I would still take the buffet over any of the specialty dining options in which you have to pay but definitely getting better overall I want to say a solid 6.5 to 7 out of 10 for MSC on the seascape getting into what is in my opinion the biggest issue on board MSC is the nightlife now do not get me wrong the nightlife on board MSC ships is great you have Italian and Spanish people all over the place you know it's going to be a party everybody's dancing and getting down and shaking a tail feather that part I absolutely love what I don't like, and let's be fair here, some of it is just kind of part of the culture when you get to places like Italy, you have a lot of families that are at the nightly events with their children and teens. Now, at face value, that does not sound bad at all, right? But imagine a bunch of unsupervised 12, 13, and 14-year-olds at the nightclub at 2 and 3 a.m. Before I continue, I do understand that the United States is in no way, shape, or form a representation of the entire world. Things are just different culturally and internationally. For example, over in France, where my girlfriend Lauren is from, believe it or not, the age of consent is 15 years old. I am not saying it is right. I am not saying it is wrong. I am simply saying that I am in no position to sit here and argue on what cultural beliefs are, especially considering that me, as an American living in the United States, the United States is a baby compared to the rest of the world, and I am not some know-all, be-all individual that seems holier than thou. However, when it comes to international waters, there are creepy people out there. From this cruise to the cruise I did on December of 2022, I saw 16 and 17 year olds leaving with grown men. Now, some of you, I hope not. Maybe you'll say that's not an issue. You don't know where they went, blah, 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 right? But I saw these kids that were inside the nightclub in club attire. I'm talking about the little sh short shorts and makeup, and it just did not sit right with me. And it ended up inevitably causing a problem at one of the parties on the pool deck at around 1 a.m. So we had what was known as the white party on the top pool deck, and it was a great time. It felt like the whole ship was there. We had a good time. But around 1 a.m., and just keep in mind, I wasn't there, but this is confirmed by the crew that was there and people that I had been hanging out with during the cruise. They are all saying the exact same thing. You had an Italian family, those of which, like I said, it is maybe a culture thing to bring your kids with you to the party, but they had their 13 and 14 year old daughters dressed as adults and it just, like I said, didn't sit right with me as far as the clothes. And I don't mean the sense that I was looking in that way, so guys, do not even go there. But I mean the sense that everybody overwhelmingly was saying that, look, th these kids should be dressed as kids, not as adults, and they shouldn't be dancing the way that they are either. It just created a very uncomfortable environment. So what ended up happening, at least what I heard allegedly, was that there was a man there that, I guess, was trying to talk to one of the daughters, and then the dad got mad and called him the big P word, you know, the the name for a man, an older man that's, that's talking to and, and, and trying to dabble with the trial, which is absolutely disgusting, I don't even want to think about it. But apparently they got, they started fighting over that. And that created a big issue, and it took a little while for security to get there, and I heard it was just a multi-person fight, all because of this one situation. Like I said, I am not here to judge on how somebody is raising their children, their cultural differences, their family, but I would say I understand how things are in Italy. I have been there. I understand it's customary, normal to take your kids out and keep them out late at night to all the parties and gatherings. But we are in international waters with international people. Some creepy people at times are out there. So for all of you out there that think it's okay to let your kids run around unsupervised and do whatever it is that they want 
just don't own a cruise ship. It is simply not the place for it. Oh, and by the way, when I asked my friend about it that is a crew member, he does work with the entertainment staff, why stuff like this isn't being enforced by security as far as the aid restrictions in the nightclub, they said that they don't have enough staff to cover such things, which I think is a little weird. There are agents running around all over the place with earpieces and stuff like that. Where in the heck are they? And I would believe because of the issues, potential suing and harassment and assaults that could take place at the nightclub, fight stuff of that nature, wouldn't you at least want to have some security at the nightclub of all places? To me, it's a little weird, but uh, that's all I got to say on that topic. Getting into the entertainment, I will say that I am impartial when it comes to MSE's entertainment. The shows, in my opinion, the production shows are typically low quality because they do have the dancers. This is no reflection on them as far as the musicians and dancers. Bands are amazing. The shows are just kind of like watered down versions of the one from the previous day. They have the crew doing a different show every single day instead of focusing on maybe two or three really high energy production shows like the rest of the cruise lines. I hate to compare, but you got to admit when you got like an aqua show on board Royal Caribbean ships and you have all these other amazing shows that are taking place, it is very difficult to not compare. The events that take place are not bad, but I would just say overall the entertainment is is just okay on board MSC ships and they are definitely in need of improvement. For the first time ever, they did have an American comedian come on board. He did a PG show and he did an adult show. By the way, at the adult show, there were also minors over there and the comedian, like a true professional, he doubled down. He started cursing even more and saying some, some very naughty words as soon as he saw that there were minors there, stating that they shouldn't be there to begin with and they want to complain, then they should and just remember to keep those kids out of those areas so that they don't hear any dirty sailor language. Overall, I do got to commend MSC for bringing in an American comedian to come in there because his jokes did read very well to the audience. Everybody in there was laughing. And I do believe that when it comes to just business and general service-based industries and cruising and vacations, in order to move up, you do have to innovate and take risk because those that don't will eventually plateau and fall to competition that is simply doing it better. So overall, would I sail with MSC again? I don't want to, to a certain extent, but there are three reasons why I will moving forward. If it is an MSC ship that is not located and sailing out of the United States because MSC Europe is different from MSC USA. I will also sail if there is a deal. MSC does have a lot of bargains. They have two day and three day cruises and I think it would be interesting for content. And also when it comes to the brand new MSC ships, then obviously I will sail on that as many people are curious. And I do believe that maybe little by little MSC will get better because they do have the money. Keep in mind MSC is the largest shipping company on planet earth if they want to make some changes as far as the overall quality and just make the ship experience the vacation cruising experience better they can do so with a little bit of time patience and of course using those funds that they have in order to produce a better quality product msc is not bad by any means I don't hate MSC, but when it comes to certain aspects, there are certain things that do definitely throw me off, as well as others that I have interviewed, my girlfriend has interviewed, and other people that have experienced MSC ships. The silver lining here is that MSC is not going anywhere. In fact, it does appear that they are starting to have somewhat an aggressive takeover over in the United States, and they are already a mainstream cruise line, soon to be a very top contender when it comes to the United States. But when it comes to the minor stuff, all the kids and teenagers running around at two and three in the morning i will say if anybody that is with msc is listening simply you got to change that that is i think no no ifs ands or buts about it if you don't change that you are not going to appeal to an american market i understand culturally things are different in italy things are different in brazil things are different over in france like i said age of consent over there is 15 and well you know things definitely just have to be different when you are talking about an international company that is sailing out of the united states and i don't mean this in the sense that the united states is number one and you got to appeal to us but if you do want to appeal to the american market well there do need to be changes but that's all i got to say when it comes to msc i know this video hasn't been long enough i apologize guys i just wanted to get all of the details in and be as thorough as possible as usual just know that i appreciate every single one of you i love all of you let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below and well, I have another cruise next week. I'll let you guys know what's going on with that one as well. I appreciate you guys. Hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you later. Take it easy.